in Star Wars, the first trilogy, Princess Leia's costumes are very, very simplistic. They're designed to not call attention to themselves. The Empire has uh, taken over, uh, fashion has gone out the window, everybody wears gray or white in a world where evil sort of is in control of things. And in the second trilogy, the costumes are designed to call attention to themselves. So it's just the opposite. Tone it down a little bit. As I write the script, I work with a design group. I mean, this might be okay for Padme. And cut. Pretty much as I write scenes, I say, okay, I got a scene here. What's set in a romantic location on a lake, and it's going to be a love scene and that kind of thing, so I need an outfit to, to go with that. As George sort of progressed with the script, he sort of realized more that he wanted to show a softer, sort of friendlier side to, to Padme. The other costumes in the first film really were about her being a queen. In episode one, she was a very formal figure and had to always be aware of her position. Last time they were so incredibly gorgeous, but it really cumbersome to wear. This one is much more about making her as beautiful as we possibly can. That's beautiful. And when Trish comes in, uh, a lot of things get thrown up because she then takes those and tries to translate those into real cloth and movement on, on the body and everything. They specifically worked hard to make them as comfortable as possible, and I really got to enjoy wearing these gorgeous, gorgeous clothes. Okay, good. That's fantastic. Isn't that fun? Which one is, what is this um, for? This is packing in the apartment. Packing? <laughs> you got it just like that to pack? <laughs> Every day I'm in a different outfit. Big job. Natalie no longer plays the queen. She's now a senator, so the costumes are are less regal and less formal and less stylized. Why don't we put a t-shirt on her? How's that? Okay. My costumes are a little bit more revealing this time. Much more feminine, not as rigid. Just to be a more casual, softer figure this time. Now this is um, P19 which Padme wears um, when she goes on a picnic uh, up to the shack fields with Hayden from the uh, retreat island. You know, she is going to fall in love. The costume in the hills in Nauru is really, really beautiful. It felt like a period piece as opposed to, you know, this futuristic piece, but it's very romantic and um, flowing. This has all been embroidered and we've laid on the little pieces of uh, uh, roses onto the bodice just to link the whole thing to do. This is a little shawl that gets draped over the shoulders and then there's twists of coloured ribbons in, in matching colours. Light, summery, but quite sort of fun so she can run about the fields and the dress floats. <laughs> and then sort of with the hair, I think we made it very Star Wars-y. That was great. We have a much more romantic story so that Padme's costumes are obviously more sultry in nature and, you know, revealing and pretty. There's one costume that George designed himself. <laughs> and that was sort of the costume that, you know, I came on set and everyone was like, oh. <laughs> that was an interesting costume to wear. And it was really hard at the end of the day because the corset was so tight. They made my waist like you know, 20 inches or something. It's him. <laughs> Magical. It's the great way that George sort of portrays women. They can be powerful and they can be soft and they can wear beautiful clothes and, and that doesn't contradict her strength. I think that's great with this character. It's sitting for tight. She's this like tough, smart woman that everyone's trying to kill because she's such a powerful leader and she also wears the coolest clothes. <laughs>